In this video, I'm going to be talking about what inflammation is, how it affects insulin resistance and obesity, six signs of chronic inflammation, and how to manage it with lifestyle. I was chronically inflamed for a good chunk of time in my early 20s. I had a lot of workload and responsibility at a young age and no idea how to manage my stress. I was pretending to be someone I wasn't, which ended in a massive identity crisis, which resulted in my body breaking down from chronic inflammation. I was anxious and upset with myself because I wanted to perform, I just did not have the life experience to understand that ignoring my stress was at the root cause of my health problems. I ended up in the hospital with debilitating joint pain and I'm sitting in the triage room and I was looking out into the waiting room full of families and injured people and I just remember thinking what am I doing here? That moment began a domino effect of me becoming obsessed with disease prevention and research. Inflammation is a topic that I have spent hours upon hours researching. As a personal trainer, I do not have access to a laboratory or doctors, so for the past decade, I've been helping clients reverse symptoms through lifestyle. Inflammation is when your immune system is fighting something off. It is a useful and life-saving system the body has to heal itself. The immune system is not supposed to always be fighting things off. Acute inflammation is when you get a cut and it heals. Chronic inflammation is when your environment is making your immune system active all the time and it is at the root cause of many diseases such as type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, PCOS, and even cancer. Common symptoms of chronic inflammation are fatigue, depression, irritable bowel, joint pain, rashes, and an increase in visceral fat aka belly fat. I'm going to give some information on common habits that cause chronic inflammation so that you can get to the root cause and get rid of symptoms altogether. Here's a short clip from Peter Atia on the effects of inflammation on obesity and metabolic health. Last kind of question on background is when we hear inflammation talked about, we often hear it talked about in the context of obesity, fat mass, metabolic health. What do we know about the relationship between metabolic health and inflammation? Well, there's a very clear relationship between inflammation and excess adiposity that um, lives outside of the sub Q space. So when you look at even small amounts of ectopic and visceral fat, that appears to promote far more inflammation than sub-Q fat. So sub-Q fat is the fat none of us like because we see it in the mirror. It's the fat that, um, you know, exists under the skin and, you know, obviously has whatever aesthetic components it has. Um, but it's, it's, it's the visceral fat, it's the organ fat that we don't see that's really driving the inflammatory response we want to avoid. And, and that's why there's such an association, a strong association between obesity and chronic disease. It's really less about the sub-Q fat. It's just that the more sub-Q fat you have, the more likely you are to have these um, other stores of fat. So um, the you know, and, and that, that relationship's not one-to-one. -one, so that's why we have sometimes the obesity paradox where we have people who are obese, but their risk of disease seems to be normal. Those tend to be people that don't have these um, ectopic and visceral stores. And conversely, you have, you know, lean people who at least on the outside look lean, but on the inside, they're quite fat. And lo and behold, their risk of disease is much higher, as is their inflammation. So it's clear that inflammation is the root cause of ectopic fat storage, which is fat that is stored in abdominal organs and skeletal muscle. These fat cells release inflammatory molecules, which feed the fire of disease. At this point, you may be wondering, A, do I have chronic inflammation? And B, how do I get rid of chronic inflammation? Statistically, there is a lot of chronic inflammation happening among humans today because it is the first time in human history that we have too much food and too much social media. So the likelihood that you, the person watching this, has an overactive immune system, aka inflammation, is pretty high. With that being said, you can get blood work done by a doctor to measure inflammation through CRP or C-reactive protein. If you do not have access to blood work or it's difficult for you to convince your doctor like it is here in Canada, then keep watching because I'm going to teach you the method I've been using with clients for my entire career, which is is a diet of low inflammatory foods, high quality movement that promotes nutrient transport to joints and the brain, and stress management tools to help with peace of mind and sleep quality. Low inflammatory foods are foods that cause very little inflammation or help resolve inflammation. Every time you eat, your body is going to have an inflammatory response. This is normal. The goal is to keep that response as low as possible with food quality and quantity. There are foods that will keep inflammation low and or help resolve it. I won't spend too much time going 
going over foods that cause too much inflammation because I just think that we all pretty much know what they are at this point, but basically any food that is found on the inside aisles of the grocery store. These foods you see on the screen are foods that give your body the nutrients it wants and needs to resolve symptoms of inflammation mentioned, which are fatigue, depression, irritable bowel, and an increase in visceral fat, aka belly fat. That is food quality. Another really important piece of this puzzle is food quantity. I have another short video where I go over how to calculate calories and macros, aka energy intake, which I will link below. The next low inflammation lifestyle is high quality movement that promotes nutrient transport to joints and the brain. I am the first to admit that at the beginning of my fitness journey, I would push through joint pain in certain exercises. The problem with this is that the wrong kind of pain can mean that you are going beyond what your bodily tissue is able to handle and will cause a very long drawn out inflammatory response instead of a short, more useful inflammatory response. The best way to move in a way that resolves unwanted inflammation and will make your body more resilient is to move well and move often. Do exercises that are challenging your range of motion while having a low impact on joints. My favorite exercises for this are the split squat, the upside down kettlebell press, the farmer carry, and the dead bug. I will link the videos to these exercises in the description below. The third piece of the puzzle for a low inflammation lifestyle is managing psychological stress to improve peace of mind and sleep quality. In a PNAS paper, they took a group of healthy adults and limited them to six hours of sleep for one week. Then they looked at the change in their genes from the blood. Relative to when they were getting eight hours of sleep, they found that 711 genes were distorted. So there's an epigenetic change in 3% of your genome with six hours of sleep versus eight hours of sleep. Also, half of these genes were upregulated and half were downregulated. The ones that were downregulated were associated with the immune system and the ones that were upregulated were associated with tumors and long-term inflammation. Main takeaway from this, lack of sleep is an extremely high inflammatory impact on the body. Do not treat the body like a genetic experiment by limiting your sleep. The method of stress management I use with clients is dependent on the client, but I have found the most success with journaling and daily check-ins. In the same way I measure physical results, I also measure emotional results and I do that by making sure my clients have good self-awareness and that they have people around them they can talk to. A recent Harvard study found that those who have the highest quality of life and lowest disease risk are those who have a high number of positive social interactions in a day. I check in with all my clients daily and send them voice notes of encouragement or a question about them. Think about the quantity and quality of your human to human interactions in a day. You may find that by changing the types of people you spend time with and talking about your worries with people you trust, your sleep quality will improve as well, which will result in lower inflammation and fewer symptoms. That's all for today's video. Hopefully you have more clarity now on what inflammation is, whether or not you have it, and how to live a low inflammation lifestyle. Make sure you leave a comment, like this video if it resonated with you, and subscribe to my channel for more tools on preventing and reversing chronic disease. See you in the next one.